Curious which restaurants from yesteryears couldn't stand the test of time? Continuing where we left off, part two presents 20 restaurant giants that couldn't make it through the ages. But what exactly led these iconic eateries to disappear from our streets? Let's find out. A&W drive-in restaurants revolutionized the fast food scene with their groundbreaking drive-in format, allowing patrons to dine directly from their automobiles. This innovation, paired with the debut of their iconic root beer float served in frosty mugs, quickly endeared A&W to the American public. Their signature in-house brewed root beer, known for its creamy and frothy texture, set A&W apart embedding it as a staple of American culture. This pioneering spirit spurred the expansion of drive-in and fast food establishments across the country. Despite facing challenges from evolving consumer demands for healthier dining options and more indoor seating, along with adapting operational strategies, A&W is actively reinventing itself. By updating its brand and expanding its menu to align with modern preferences, a&W aims to reinvigorate its historical charm and relevance in today's fast food landscape. Shakey's Pizza claimed its stake in the American culinary scene by mainstreaming pizza as a fast food staple, intertwining food with fun-filled entertainment. Its innovation was not just in food, but also in atmosphere, as demonstrated when Shakey's introduced the Bunch of Lunch Buffet offering a variety of pizzas, pastas, and other items, making every visit a new experience. The chain's family-friendly vibe, accentuated by live ragtime music and an open kitchen where patrons could watch their pizzas being crafted, was groundbreaking. Shakey's signature thin crust pizza, enjoyed in a communal setting, distinguished it from its competitors, nurturing a unique social dining experience. However, the brand's decline can be traced back to the rapid expansion of pizza chains with delivery services and a shift in consumer preferences toward thicker crusts and more diverse toppings. Woolworth's lunch counters were an integral part of American dining, offering simple, affordable meals to the masses. Pioneers of self-service, these counters allowed customers to choose from a variety of pre-made dishes, revolutionizing dining with speed and convenience. Known for their grilled sandwiches and ice cream sundaes, they epitomized mid-20th century American life and played a pivotal role in the civil rights movement through historic sit-ins. However, the rise of malls and fast food chains signaled their decline, reflecting changing retail and dining trends. Although Woolworth's unique experience has not been replicated, its legacy remains a cherished memory of a past era in American culture. Sizzler made its mark as a beloved destination for steak, seafood, and salad bar aficionados, embodying the casual dining boom of the 1980s and 1990s. Recognizing the importance of variety, Sizzler introduced the concept of a craft salad bar, allowing diners to customize their salads with a wide range of fresh ingredients and toppings. Its pioneering buffet-style salad bar and reasonably priced steak dinners appealed to a broad audience, blending quality with affordability. Over the years, Sizzler adapted its menu and service model in response to changing dietary trends and consumer preferences. However, the ascent of fast casual restaurants and shifting dining expectations contributed to its decline. Despite this, Sizzler's influence persists in the industry particularly in how buffet and salad bar offerings are perceived and integrated into modern restaurant concepts. Roy Rogers restaurants set themselves apart in the fast food field with a diverse menu that included burgers, fried chicken, and roast beef sandwiches. A significant factor in its growth was the introduction of the Fixin's Bar, allowing customers to customize their sandwiches with a variety of toppings. This approach, combined with strategic outlet placement and memorable marketing that emphasized the quality and variety of its offerings, fostered a robust brand identity. However, the brand faced difficulties maintaining its market position amidst stiff competition and evolving consumer tastes, leading to a decline. 
Despite these challenges, Roy Rogers has maintained its presence in the fast food landscape, supported by a dedicated fan base and initiatives to modernize its menu and outlets. Stuckey's played a pivotal role in the development of roadside convenience stores and fast food services in the South, becoming an emblem of long road trips with its iconic teal blue roof and pecan log rolls. It was Stuckey's expansion into offering branded merchandise, including its famous pecan candies, that solidified its status as a roadside staple. Initially a roadside stand selling pecans, Stuckey's grew to include a variety of southern fast food offerings and souvenirs, capturing the essence of American road travel. The brand's decline mirrored broader shifts in American travel habits, including the rise of interstate highways that bypassed many of its locations. Despite its diminished presence, Stuckey's remains a cherished symbol of mid-20th century road trips with ongoing efforts to revive the brand. Bennigan's set itself apart with an Irish pub theme, creating a welcoming environment for both adults and families. Through themed nights and happy hours, it became a community favorite, offering signature dishes like the Monte Cristo sandwich and death by chocolate dessert, complemented by an extensive beer and cocktail menu. Despite its initial success, Bennigan's struggled as the market filled with similar concepts and consumer preferences shifted towards fast casual and healthier dining options, leading to a decline. This reflects the broader challenges within the casual dining sector, emphasizing the difficulty of staying relevant amidst changing tastes and a competitive landscape. Ponderosa Steakhouses established a distinct presence in the casual dining sector with their innovative steak buffet concept, blending the traditional steakhouse experience with the variety of a buffet. This model allowed guests to choose from a plethora of steaks prepared on demand, complemented by an extensive buffet of sides, salads, and desserts. Their pioneering approach, merging steakhouse values with buffet convenience, positioned Ponderosa as a favorite for family dining. The restaurant was celebrated for its rustic inviting atmosphere, allowing families to enjoy fulfilling meals affordably. Yet, shifts towards healthier options and the emergence of fast casual eateries presented challenges. Despite these hurdles, the legacy of Ponderosa lives on, influencing contemporary dining concepts focused on providing quality, variety, and value. Steak & Ale introduced a novel dining concept by merging the affordability of a steak menu with the casual, relaxed atmosphere of a tavern, pioneering a new category in the dining scene. Its introduction of the salad bar as a complementary addition to any entree was a game-changer, offering diners variety and a sense of personalization. Signature dishes like the herb-roasted prime rib and Kensington Club steak set against a backdrop of warm, dark wood decor, distinguished steak and ale from its peers. This concept laid the groundwork for future casual dining establishments by offering an upscale dining experience at more accessible prices. The downfall of steak and ale was brought about by intense competition and economic downturns, but its influence lingers in the casual dining sector with many restaurants incorporating elements of its model to create a welcoming dining environment. Red Barn, with its barn-shaped restaurants and diverse menu, stood out in the fast food landscape of the 1960s and 1970s. The introduction of the self-service barn buffet allowed customers to mix and match their meals, a forward-thinking concept that differentiated Red Barn from its competitors. With offerings that extended beyond the typical fast food fare, Red Barn appealed to a broad customer base. Its marketing strategies, featuring catchy jingles and family-oriented promotions, built a strong brand identity. However, Red Barn's decline was due to fierce competition in the fast food sector and evolving consumer tastes. Despite its closure, the legacy of Red Barn's innovative approach to fast food and distinctive branding is fondly remembered by former patrons and serves as a reminder of the importance of adaptability in the fast food industry.
Sambo's rapid expansion and controversial branding were pivotal in its complex history within the fast food realm. The chain initially found success with a strategy that included offering breakfast all day, a novelty at the time that attracted a wide demographic. However, its name, derived from a 19th century children's book, became a point of contention due to racial connotations, overshadowing its early achievements. Efforts to mitigate the backlash, such as renaming some locations, were insufficient to reverse the damage to the brand's image. Beyond the controversy, Sambo's faced challenges from increasing competition and shifts in consumer dining preferences. The narrative of Sambo's underscores the significance of brand identity and the impact of cultural sensitivity on a business's success. Wetson's Burgers, with its distinctive offerings and strategic positioning, made a mark in the competitive New York area fast food scene. Its initiative to offer value meals, including a burger, fries, and a drink at a competitive price, was a precursor to the value menu concept widely adopted in the industry today. Known for its signature Big W Burger and catchy slogan, Give a Hamburger a Break, Wetson's aimed to challenge larger chains with a focus on quality and affordability. However, Wetson's encountered difficulty in maintaining its position against national competitors, leading to its decline. The story of Wetson's highlights the challenges of standing out in a crowded market and the importance of continuous innovation and brand differentiation. York Steakhouse became a cherished destination for steak enthusiasts in the 1970s and 1980s, setting itself apart from other chains with a unique self-service model. This approach allowed customers to select their preferred cuts of meat from a display case, enhancing the dining experience with an element of personal choice and transparency in the preparation process. Alongside its commitment to family-friendly dining and value-oriented pricing, York Steakhouse catered to groups and families seeking a high-quality dining experience at a reasonable cost. The decline of York Steakhouse was influenced by shifts towards more casual and fast-casual dining options, as well as heightened competition. Despite its closure, the concept of offering quality steak in a less formal setting has influenced contemporary restaurants, showcasing York Steakhouse's enduring impact on the dining industry. Pofolks offered an authentic Southern dining experience, distinguished by its traditional Southern cooking and warm hospitality. Selected locations featured live music and themed decor, further immersing guests in a Southern home-like ambiance. The restaurant's cozy, country-inspired atmosphere paired with a comforting menu, featuring classics like fried chicken, catfish, and biscuits, resonated with those seeking genuine Southern comfort food. However, Po folks struggled with market shifts, including a trend towards healthier eating and the rise of fast casual competitors, leading to its decline. This case underlines the obstacles faced by traditional eateries in maintaining relevance in an evolving food industry, underscoring the need for continual innovation and adaptability. Penguin Point established itself as a cherished fixture in Indiana, offering a menu finely tuned to local tastes with hits like the Big Wally and Tenderloin sandwiches. By prioritizing local ingredients, the chain highlighted its commitment to community and quality, distinguishing itself through both fast service and culinary distinction. More than just a restaurant, Penguin Point played a key role in community engagement, sponsoring events and fostering local ties, thus becoming an integral part of the social fabric. Despite challenges from larger competitors and changing tastes, Penguin Point's enduring legacy underlines the lasting impact of establishments that resonate deeply with their communities, affirming its place in Indiana's fast food heritage. Goodies, a regional chain, distinguished itself with a menu tailored to local tastes, using seasonal and locally sourced ingredients for fresher dining, its standout chocolate malts and burger specials marked its unique spot in the fast food industry, offering personalized experiences with local flavors, a contrast to larger chains. Despite its distinct appeal, Goodies faced challenges due to its limited national reach and competition from bigger fast food names, contributing to its decline. 
Goody's story underscores the importance for regional chains to balance local authenticity with growth and adaptability in a competitive market. Sioux Plantation distinguished itself in the buffet and salad bar scene by prioritizing fresh, nutritious dining options. By serving a diverse selection of freshly made, healthy dishes, it broke away from traditional buffet norms, appealing to those seeking both variety and healthfulness. Offering a wide array of salads, soups, pasta, and baked goods, Sioux Plantation met a broad spectrum of dietary preferences in a sector often critiqued for its lack of wholesome choices. However, the shift towards personalized, fast, casual dining experiences and operational hurdles led to its downfall. The closure of Sioux Plantation signifies a notable departure within the buffet and salad bar domain, reflecting the evolving preferences of today's health-aware and time-constrained consumers. Walgreens lunch counters were instrumental in establishing America's diner culture in the early 20th century, pioneering to-go services that aligned with the bustling lifestyle of American workers and consumers. These counters offered speedy, accessible dining options, serving up classic American dishes like sandwiches, coffee, and milkshakes, and transcended being mere eateries to become vital community hubs that welcomed diverse social gatherings. However, as Walgreens reoriented towards healthcare and retail, it phased out these counters, mirroring shifts in societal norms, dining habits, and the pharmacy's role. This transition marks a nostalgic end to an era as the cherished lunch counters give way to contemporary fast casual spots and coffee houses, leaving memories of a quintessential American dining experience. Charlie Brown's Steakhouse stood out in the steakhouse market by offering quality and value through nightly specials and themed events, enhancing the classic steakhouse vibe. Renowned for its prime rib and expansive farmer's market salad bar in a family-friendly atmosphere, it maintained high standards of quality and customer satisfaction. Despite its popularity, Charlie Brown's faced economic pressures and changing preferences towards lighter, more diverse dining options. These trends towards fast casual dining and health-conscious choices challenge traditional steakhouse models, reflecting broader shifts in the restaurant industry that affected establishments like Charlie Brown's. Quiznos stood out with its gourmet toasted subs, setting high standards in the sandwich industry with innovative recipes and quality ingredients. Despite its unique offerings like the classic Italian and mesquite chicken, Quiznos struggled against competition, franchisee problems, and shifting tastes, leading to its decline. This highlights the necessity of adaptability and competitiveness in the fast food sector. New market entrants are learning from Quiznos's challenges, prioritizing flexibility and customer focus to succeed where it faltered. Did these fast food chains bring back flavors of the past? If so, like this video, click subscribe, and stay tuned for more nostalgia trips.